This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, bright soul. Happy March to you. Thank you for joining me on today's podcast. You made it through February. 2020 is moving along. So congratulations on making it through what seem to be a tough month for most people. Here we are in March, so we have an opportunity to set new intentions and go forward and make it the best month, day, week that we possibly can. So I'm just going to dive right into today's podcast topic, and that is becoming immune to other people's energy so that you can be a part of the collective world and function without it taking you down. And most of you probably know what I'm talking about you could have been this way your whole life, or it could be just since you've been learning about energy work or meditating more or being more service oriented or really opening up your heart chakra. You may notice that as you go on this path, you become really sensitive. So what I mean by that is the sensitivity is not a bad thing. It just means you have a big heart. So you're more in tune with the world around you. So you tend to pick up people's their vibes that they're putting out. So if someone isn't feeling well, you probably can sense it without them saying anything. And when you have a radiating heart center, people tend to be drawn to you because of the healing properties that you're putting out. Most people walk around numb, they're distracted, and they aren't doing the practices that we are doing. So they're drawn to that light. And so oftentimes you'll hear light workers say they can't handle being around people because it's negative. They're picking up the vibes. And I'm just wondering if any of this sounds familiar to you. Because <laughs> I will tell you, I went through a period years ago where I was, I experienced a trauma, like a, a traumatic relationship ending. And I had so many things up in the air during that time in my life. And I was just beginning to open myself up as a channel to do readings for people. I was drawn to it. And then I started learning about energy healing and I started meditating in a way that I hadn't before. And all of a sudden, I became so incredibly sensitive. I couldn't go into medical environments because I was sensing all of the panic and and fear energy in the medical environment, the invasive practices. And I work for a medical hospital, so that's not going to (laughs) work. And it became so crippling. And I started wondering if something was physically wrong with me. So I went through all of these tests in doctors and physicians, acupuncturists, holistic providers. I mean, it was exhausting trying to figure out what is going on with me. I, I'm so sensitive. I don't know what's going on. I feel weak, like I'm sick. I wasn't sick. I was perfectly fine. And it took years of me trying to figure out what was going on with me. Well, here's what I've learned. And I've learned this through pranic healing mainly, that what happens is, is that when you start to meditate, you, when you meditate, especially if you're doing meditation on loving kindness, you know, which I have posted on my YouTube channel, I've talked about a lot. It's kind of a Buddhist tradition when you're sending loving kindness to other people into the planet. What happens is you bring down a lot of spiritual energy through your crown. And when that spiritual energy pours through your crown, it opens up your chakras because what happens if you have a big waterfall gushing through your system, it's going to flush out. And so what happens is as you do it on a regular basis, your chakras, your energy centers get bigger and bigger. And whatever was in there amplifies. So if you were had like a little seed of fear in your solar plexus, for example, now you might become even more fearful or more anxious. Whatever was in there, the more that you meditate, if you're not cleaning it, the more will it will express. So that's why you'll you'll see people with certain phobias, or you'll notice the more stress they get, the more of that negative quality gets expressed. This happens to all of us. So I'm not pointing fingers. I've been there. And that's why I worked so hard to find a solution. And now I'm going to share what I've learned with you so that you can also get better and function in the world. Because if we're doing all this beautiful work, but we can't go out into society and share it with others, are we really having the impact that we were meant to have? I don't think so. We can sit at home and meditate and send loving kindness to the planet. And that is certainly very helpful. But at the end of the day, you want to be a, an example. You want to be a light. You want to help people. Human connection. You know, that's really the point. And so what I learned is that, you know, all of us have a past 
And whether you believe in multiple lives or not, that's on you. But what I believe is that we come in, you know, we've lived lifetimes after lifetimes, we come in, and we already have certain things that we want to work out, our soul has already contacted these things to work out. So we come in with things that we need to work on. So we all come in with a personality and certain challenges and things that we have to overcome. That's part of the experience. And so once you get on the spiritual path, all of those earlier traumas are still embedded into your energy field that you have to clear out. And it isn't a one and done. And I think a lot of times, even when I work with people privately, they'll call, uh, make an appointment, and we'll get on the phone together. And they give me a laundry list of decades of stuff that they want to work out in a half hour session. It's possible, but it's not probable. This is something that's ongoing that we have to continually work. And then the more that you work at it, the better you get. And the higher you climb, and then the more you can help people. So let's just say you had, you used to have a poverty mindset because you were raised, you know, by a family that was struggling financially. And even though you're doing well, you still have that lingering poverty mindset. Well, that was a seed that was planted long ago in your energy centers that you need to work out. So, you know, for me, if you're not working with a private practitioner, One of the easiest things you can do is meditate so that you're flushing out your energy centers and do physical exercise because when you do physical exercise, you expel things from your energy center, from your body, from your aura. So it's good on a physical level, but it's also good on an energetic level. And so the other thing that we, that was shared with us in one of our classes is that if you've noticed the solar plexus is the energy center that gets activated with the lower emotions. So your heart is your higher emotions and your solar plexus, those are your lower emotions. So when you begin to feel uncomfortable or picking up people's stuff, most people will cross their arms and they cross it right over their solar plexus without realizing it. So I just pay really close attention to my own natural instincts of what I do to protect myself. So, you know, if you're feeling activated, you're out in public and you're feeling activated, cross your arms. It's something really easy to do. You can also cross your legs and that closes down your aura. So you're not picking up other people's stuff. So one of the things is just to look at what, what are the sensations you're feeling when you're around other people? Because, Whatever those sensations are, it's an indicator as to what energy center in your body you need to work out. So it's so easy. Go on the internet, Google different energy centers and what are the qualities associated with those energy centers. So no need, you know, I'm not an expert in energy centers. I do energy work, but I look at a chart just like everyone else, unless it's ones that I work on, you know, regularly. So um, look up those qualities and then you can think like, okay, this is an energy center. I really want to work on clearing out. Because obviously I've got something lodged there because this is getting activated for me when I'm in public and I want to be able to ground myself and be strong and shine my light and help others. And I need to be able to function in the world in order to do that. So I hope that makes sense. So that's one of the things that I personally did is helped me tremendously. And there's three things that help you get your chakras bigger and cleaner, keep them clean. And I shared this last week. They're really easy. Service exercise and meditation. If you can do those three things conti- like on a continuous basis, this isn't, well, I'm going to meditate this month and, you know, maybe I'll do some kind of service. And the service can be giving to charity, you know, and decreeing that it comes back to you and neutralizes your negative karma. It could be giving to family and friends, you know, like helping out. So it can be like money and service it depends on what it is that you need. Um, the exercise, it doesn't have to be high intensity exercise. It can be yoga or something you enjoy outdoors, golfing, Tai Chi. I personally, for me, what works best is like high intensity exercise, but I'm also doing this type of work and I have a public presence. So I have to really push things out of my energy field and keep myself really strong. And then for meditation, I mean, I've shared before, I like pranic healing meditation on twin hearts. There's free versions on the internet. There's also versions on iTunes that you can download, but I also do my own loving kindness meditation that I've posted on this YouTube channel. So it's whatever works for you and it's helping you pull down that divine energy. So it's giving you like a a spiritual bath and flushing out your energy centers. And then you're exercising, you're giving service. So you're getting your heart center big. So what happens is, is when people get overly stressed and critical, their heart center is smaller than their other chakras and our heart center. That's our, our higher emotions. So that's compassion, mercy, and love. And that's what we want to express most in the world because 
you know, we're all learning, we're all growing, we all make mistakes. In order to be forgiven, we must also forgive. So it helps you, when you're a forgiving person and you're a loving person, it helps you to work with the law of mercy. So you give mercy and you get mercy. And it also helps you to be a calmer, more present version of yourself. So those are really easy things that we can all do. Now, I'm not saying that in a busy world, they're super simple to do, but they're, I am saying they're worth it to do. So those are some, some things that you can do. Here's the other thing I want to share. I have had times in my life where I'm so exhausted with people wanting things from me. And what I mean by that is I was born into the world to be doing the work that I'm doing right now, part-time, you know, doing the healing work that I'm doing and teaching and helping and just radiating a light and being an example and learning and sharing. And so there's been times in my life where I get really run down and tired and then I get frustrated because I feel as though everywhere I turn, someone is dumping on me or wanting something from me or needing something from me. And, and I know you're probably not in your head because you can totally relate. But here is what I've learned. Like qualities attract like qualities. So if you're constantly, this is, it's just an awareness. So it's not to get angry or blame, but this has worked so well for me. If in a week time span, I'm suddenly attracting people that are just complaining to me about one specific thing over and over, that has to exist in me because if it didn't exist in me, they wouldn't be drawn to me to express it. So it's, it's almost like letting me know areas in which I need to work on because they wouldn't be coming to me with that if it wasn't in me. There's something there that needs to heal there's some lesson in there for me. There's some practice that needs to happen or else it wouldn't be showing up. And so I use it as an indicator instead of getting frustrated and feeling victimized by it. The other thing is years ago, I used to follow this herbalist. His name was Tahuti Matra. He was a hoot. He used to have a YouTube channel and um, I used to use his products and things. Um, anyway, he used to do this whole, he, it was really a rant, but it was funny to me because he would say, because he's doing an herbal healing type of industry, you know, type of work that he would get people that would complain to him and say, I'm a light worker, but I attract narcissists and negative people. And they're the only people that ever come around and blah, blah, blah. And he was so logical about it. He said, if you're a light worker, you aren't going to attract healed people. <laughs> because if you're a healer, who needs heal a healer, sick people, sick people need a healer. And if we're all here for a mission, then what are you what are you talking about? Like, that's who you're going to attract, because those are the people that need your help. And so it allows you to fulfill your mission. It allows you to generate good karma by being the light, by helping people by showing mercy by showing compassion. And even when we feel as though we're just giving giving and we're not receiving, it doesn't mean that we don't have a, a large bank storing up all of this good karma that is eventually going to come back to us. So it was so logical, but it helped me so much. And then he was, you know, going on a further rant about doctors heal. You don't go to the doctor just to say, I'm doing fantastic. Hey, you, you go when you're sick, because that's what they're doing. Same thing, you know, with light workers and healers. And it's really more about you having the opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. So I didn't have someone like me in my life growing up. I had to become an adult and seek those positive mentors out. I had to seek out compassionate people, people that could help me. And so it was a lonely place for me for a long time. But I wouldn't have developed those skills if I just had it given to me. And so at the end of the day, my soul chose that environment on purpose so I could cultivate that strong drive to create it for myself. And now that I have it, I'm happy to give it to others because I understand what it feels like when you don't have it. So it's often the struggle that motivates us to seek the answers, find the solution, solve it, and then help others do the same. And so if you can just look at your life and try to shift yourself out of victimhood and whatever challenge it is that you're dealing with, that's the area that we really want to focus on serving others and helping others in. So for example, when I was having, it felt like I was having health issues, but it was really just my energy body trying to adjust. So at that time, I started focusing a lot on helping other people with healing issues. When I start getting a lot of clients at one time that have the same health issue, 
I, I say, okay, wait a minute. Is this like a karmic payment coming up for me to where I need to help these clients heal this so that I'm paying off something that, you know, maybe coming up for payment? I don't know. But because I understand the law of magnetism and how we like attracts like, it's always a good reflection practice to just look within and say, how can I transmute this? How can I help this? How can I heal this? How can I make it better for them and also for myself? And when you get that nice flow, that circular flow, so giving and receiving, giving and receiving and keeping that balance, then life becomes a lot easier and it becomes a lot more joyful. And if you're doing your practices, you'll have more to give. The only time I get run down and exhausted and just like, I'm done, I don't want to do this anymore, is when I myself haven't had the chance to meditate to the level that I should be or doing service that I would love to do or exercising. It's when my body gets run down because I'm not doing my practices, then my energy centers are out of balance. So I then express negative qualities from the energy centers that are being hit the most, whether it's external stuff or my own stuff coming out. So I hope this is making sense to you. Um, the last thing that's really important is just doing shields, especially if you are out in the world dealing with people. Cause you know, I have a lot of friends that do like social work. They do tough work where they're dealing with trauma or their counselors or their teachers. So they're helping other people deal with trauma. It's even more important for you to clear yourself with salt baths. You know, getting all the negative energy off you, exercise, meditation, doing shields, putting shields on yourself, energy shields, um, taking a walk on your lunch, getting out of the office to get some fresh air, go sit under a pine tree. Just being with nature is extremely cleansing and healing. Going to the ocean, these little things, not only do they clear your energy centers, but they give you a renewed sense of creativity, connection to spirit. And a renewed sense of calm so you can continue to fulfill your mission in the world. And the other thing is just remember, all of the good that you're doing, it's not just for nothing. It will come back to you, even at times when it feels like, oh my gosh, I give and give and give and give and I don't get anything back. And I've been there many times and you feel drained and exhausted. I understand. Just know that those are times when you need to do a little pause and do something for yourself take care of yourself, replenish, and then give your best to the world and shine your light. So that's all I have for you on that. And I surely hope it helped. Let's do a healing. Uh, this specific healing, I want to just do some clearing and then I want to run some really nice shields on you so that you can function in the world and go out and do your mission. Because again, not everyone is doing this work. Not everyone is meditating, trying to be conscious doing loving kindness meditations for others, extending compassion. Not everyone's doing it. And so the more of us that do it, the better off the whole collective will be. So go ahead and uncross your arms and legs. Let's get ready for this healing. Just cleaning your auric field, and now I'm going to run some shields. Now I'm just running healing energy, fill in your aura. 
and grounding you. Okay, and so it is. You know, wouldn't it be lovely if we all get big, bright auras and energy centers and we have mostly the positive qualities being expressed from each energy center and we influence the environment instead of the environment influencing us. One of the things that really resonated with me from my pranic healing training most recently is um, the instructor shared that what happens when people are draining you or you're around negative people and you start to feel tired, it's because their chakras are big and dirty. So the negative quality is overpowering the positive quality because your chakras aren't as big as their chakras. So, you know, and, and that happens from you know overthinking and there's all, all kinds of reasons why, or maybe they're physical and exercising and passionate and they just have a lot of negative qualities being expressed. So the goal is to get your chakras big and clean so that you influence the environment, shine your light, and let's make the world a better place. If you haven't left me a review on iTunes, I would so appreciate it. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post a new healing every week. I wish you a beautiful week. It's March. I want to wish you a beautiful March the whole month. But let's go out there and have a great week. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you. Take care. Bye-bye.